welcome to yet another runway. Take this out. GT12. Yes, I'm back again with Supercar Driver and best of the best. And today we've got a serious head-to-head -head with, quite frankly, some of the world's greatest supercars. We're laying down the line. to an RAF base um, and we have use all day of their eternally long runway. I think, like, I'm amazed I can still hear that SV, it's so loud. I think this thing must be two miles long because it goes with the curvature of the earth. The cars go to a certain degree and then they just vanish. Today I've brought down the 675LT and we're going head to head against some pretty spectacular cars. And the idea today is that we're going to put the LT head to head with some incredibly fast supercars. But the ultimate goal here is to see how an LT compares with a Porsche 918. And the reason for that is lots of people have asked me, where do you possibly go from a 675LT? What's the next step? What's the next car? And I truly believe having driven that thing and jumped in and out of various other supercars. That is the last frontier of supercars before you get into hypercar territory. So I want to find out what another half a million quid gets you by putting up the LT against a 918 Spider because I think that's probably the next closest car, even though the jump is huge. So. Without further ado, let's hop in these amazing cars and do this! So, I've only ever been in one of these on a track. In fact, it was Bahrain. Oh, Bahrain. Yeah, Bahrain. But as I was saying earlier, while we're here doing yeah. the drag racing with Supercar Driver, yeah. I get questioned a lot, you know, where do you go from the LT? And my answer's always been, I think the next step up is quite a significant step up to a hypercar area. I think an LT is the like last bastion of supercars. It's really, it's positioned itself there, hasn't it? Yeah. It really has, it's, it performs so well. So yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I'd, have to, I'd have to agree with you. And so I thought, you know, while we have the opportunity today, we've got yours here, mine here, we're gonna drag them later on okay. to discover the inevitable. <laughs> but still, I think it'll be interesting to compare them, how, how they feel, and really, it's rare to get an owner's take on their car, so I guess really one nine eighteen. Yeah, I mean it's it's a, it's a phenomenal car. It really yeah. is. It, you know, there's one thing developing a lot of power. Yeah. Um, and there's another thing, you know, getting that power down. Yeah. The the traction in the car is is phenomenal. And you know, if you look at it on paper, you think, oh, you know, it's going to be quite sterile, full of stereo, full of drive, torque vectoring. Um, but when it's when it wants to go fast, yeah, then correct. yes, it is sensible. It right. is sensible. It's not you know it, it likes to get the power down. It's you know once once the back end starts to come out, you have to feed in the lock very little lock and then feed it out very quickly compared to like a conventional two wheel drive car. Okay, um, but a very very playful chassis. Build <laughs> build quality. Well, just again, stepping it's, into it, is, it's, it's an occasion just to sit in this Yeah, build, build quality, you know, they didn't mess around. VW, no. you know, threw quite a lot of R&D money at the car. Yeah. And um, and they put, like, I think on each of the prototypes, they put over a million testing miles on the car. So they've... Um, That's unbelievable. Yeah. This was... I would have, in fact, it was a third last off the, off the production line. Let's talk about it as a road car because... Yeah. because you know, it's a road car, and, and Porsche have engineered it. You know, you know, Carrera GT was a, a different situation, really. Um, it wasn't really designed as, as a road car, and it's much less forgiving. Yeah. Um, this is a phenomenal road car in the sense that there's a lot of mechanical grip, and mechanical grip is really what you need on the on road. The road I mean, there's, there's, you know, there's aero grip, which is great on a circuit mm. for, for race cars. Um, 
but predominantly mechanical grip is is, is obviously you know what the the, yeah. the Porsche engineers have have decided is is the key factor, and, and then again of course with the with the service intervals, mm -hmm. you know, it's about four year service intervals because of the fact that wow. the engine hours don't translate to the miles on the car because you know the amount of times you drive sure. an Emo. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so obviously the fact the electricity is a great way to provide boost. You know, it doesn't yeah. suffer from, from any heat, lag at all. It doesn't suffer from any lag. I mean, no. instant, instant. Yeah. Uh, well, extra is because it's naturally aspirated anyway. So, so exactly. there is no turbo to torque fill. Exactly. And it's high brake exactly. assist as well. Now, people always ask, you know, out of those three, LaFerrari, 918, P1, you know, people, that generic question of which one would you have. I actually think if you stand back and look at this as a complete package, it offers the best of, of them all because people forget as well it's a Targa. Yep. So you've got the open top element. It's still got the naturally aspirated engine. Yes, um, revs the 9.2 and sounds the, Which is delicious. ridiculous. Um, yeah, and it still has the hybrid assist. But also, let's face it, most of the time you are driving these cars on the road. And as yes. you mentioned earlier, having four-wheel drive loads of mechanical grip in a car with this much power is pretty important stuff. If we go back the last time Porsche launched something like this, which was the Carrera GT, that thing has a reputation for itself now. It, it does, and it's a very, very special car, but mm -hmm. it bites back and you need to be constant. I mean, it's obviously not for driving around town because of that. Yeah, that, that crazy clutch and clutch thing. You know. So right now, I'm sort of building this video around where do you go from the LT probably to a hyper car type of car. The idea is to put my LT head to head with this just to see what that next step gets you because it's not a small next step either. I mean, yeah. the price jump from an LT to this is two houses. Yeah, and then sometimes it's, it's a non tangible things that would yeah, make a difference absolutely. and it's difficult yeah. obviously it is to really hard put to convey that, that yeah. on film. Right, dude, thank you so much for that. Let's see how it does. The 70S ultimately lost against the F12. I was wondering where that match was going. So now it's me and the LT versus the F12. Um, not sure how this is gonna go. We've got 740 horsepower in the F12, 666 in this, uh, or 675 PS. But this weighs a lot less than the F12. Uh, and it's got some crazy torque as well. So yeah, let's see. Let's uh, play around with launch control and uh, Yeah, hopefully we'll suck it to the F12 and announce on the radio Okay, next up, Lamborghini Aventador Super Veloce. Honestly, don't know which way this will go. Off the line, potentially the SV does have Quattro. Well, oops, Audi term. Does have four-wheel drive. Um, 
this is lighter. I don't know. I, I, I honestly don't know. It'll be, well, let's chat and let's find out. James, right. Three, two, one, go! to go for a lap of uh, Leicestershire. He's all the way down. He's just blown past. Good God, this thing is, well, it's just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. So it's gonna be super interesting now to see where it is with a 918 Spider. It's a good race. It's a good race. Wow, crazy, crazy. Right, 918, bring it. Okay, this is it. This is moment of truth. This is LT versus 918 Spider. Uh, I think we know who's gonna kill this, but the purpose of this is to see just by how much. How much is that 918 gonna rip this thing a new a-hole? So let's see, let's line up, do the best launch control I can. Tires are sticky now. Doesn't have hybrid assist, doesn't have best part of a thousand horsepower. Um, but does have a carbon tub, tw twin clutch gearbox and sticky tires, and it is lighter. Even still, I think we know where this is heading, but, oh God, the the power of that, it, it just accelerated past me from standstill without launch control. It, it, it actually explodes. It's, it's borderline ridiculous. It's, yeah. I'm actually excited to see just how much it does just go, but anyway, less chatting, more dragging. Okay, moment of truth. <laughs> than I was of the Aventador SV, if that makes sense. Wow, 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 that is, I mean, yeah. That's, and that's why that's a hypercar, different bracket. I point this back here so you can actually see what I'm saying. That was amazing, hey, see that? Do you know what was interesting? For the first, you know, up to sort of 100, it wasn't too far off, gradually came past, but after then was when it really took over. Just mind bending, mind bending. <laughs> so that is it. That is the end of today's drag race event. I'm quite surprised actually. The LT has blown me away yet again. It didn't quite have the punch to keep up with the 918, and quite rightly so. But it destroyed the SV. I can't believe it. I mean, at the end, in my mirrors, it felt like three cars lengths. I'll have to clarify that with the drone footage. Um, but yeah, run after run, it just left it. So, pole position, 918, second, 675 LT, and I'm super happy with that. Ultimately, it is not a hypercar, but I think today highlights that as being the supercar of supercars, certainly in modern day terms and in the you know realms of performance that we have access to right now. The LT just punches so far above its weight. As always guys, thanks so much for watching and if you like what you've seen today, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Ciao!